Hello everyone, my name is Carrie and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a journaling Q&A and I am super excited. A lot of you guys have been asking a bunch of awesome journaling questions and just so many of you just won all of the journaling videos and I promise you I will be making plenty of them. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already if you want to see any of my future journaling videos as well as all of the other videos that I will be making throughout college and things like that. So I asked you guys in another video to send in a bunch of different journaling questions that you might have and I went through and wrote them all down and there are so many questions like very very many to answer so there's no way I'm gonna be getting through them all in today's video but I will do my best to get through some of them and whatever I don't get to I will do in another video and also if you think of any along the way make sure to comment them down below or you can DM me or whatever because I will be making a bunch of journaling Q&A's all throughout the next however long I don't know so grab some water sit down get comfy and let's get started so by far my number one journaling question is if I'm going to make a another reading my diary video. So many of you guys really, really, really want me to make more of those and I just wanted to put it out there. I know I've said it in a couple of my other videos but I just wanted to like say it again so more people can hear it. I will definitely make more of those videos but I'm planning on right now doing them with every like subscriber milestone that I hit. So when I first made that one video, the first one that I did, I did it when I hit 1K subscribers. Now I am currently about like almost at 3.5K but I think I'm gonna be making my next one around 10k. Originally I was saying like 5k or 10k but I think I'm gonna do 10k just because it is kind of like a long video to make because I like take pictures of the little like words and journal entries that I'm reading as I'm reading it so that took a long time to edit but also just like because my journal entries get recent very quickly because I didn't journal nearly as much when I was younger and I don't want to be sharing journal entries that are very recent so just like to space them out I'm gonna be doing them with every like big subscriber milestone as of right now I only know 10k and other than that I don't have any other big milestones planned out I don't know if it'll be 15 20k whatever I don't know but yes I will definitely be making more of those videos the rest of the questions I feel like some of them are similar to others but I'm just gonna kind of like go in the order that I wrote them down so someone asked what do you write if you literally do nothing that day there are a couple different answers to this because you know I don't always write the same thing. For those of you who don't know, I journal every single day. I have a few videos on everyday journaling and just my experiences with journaling. But so I daily journal and there are a lot of days where I sit around and don't do anything or it's just like a really boring day and I don't always want to just like write on paper. Today was really boring. I did nothing and fill an entire page like that because that's another thing I do write an entire page every single time that I write at least one page. That's like my minimum that I do. When I don't do anything during a day you know sometimes I will just have entries where I am like kind of just like writing down nonsense on the paper just so I can like get something down and fill up the page because you know I'm not always in a wonderful mood and like wanting to write a bunch of stuff so I definitely do have journal entries where I just am like kind of listing off things and just like saying like I'm tired I want to go to bed and whatever but something else that you should think about is that you don't necessarily need to just journal about what you did that day you are able to write about literally anything that you want so you don't even need to write about like your day-to-day -day life or what just happened yesterday or this big thing whatever if you want to you can but you can also write about like your thoughts on things that are happening in the world or what you think about like I don't know things about yourself if you haven't done that you can write your favorite color or your, about your family your friends and really like anything you can talk about what you're passionate about what you have goals for in the future how you've changed as a person just a bunch there's so many different things that you can write about and you can even like write stories you can write poems you can draw pictures you don't need to necessarily just stick with writing about your day-to-day -day life but if it is like a journal that you are specifically only documenting like what you do each day then honestly you could just write about like the little things in your day I feel like journaling every single day has made me realize and like notice the smaller things in life a lot more because when I feel like I've done nothing that day I can really dive down deep into how I was feeling throughout the day if I literally laid in bed and didn't want to get out of bed all day and therefore I did nothing I could write about like why I didn't want to get out of bed or how I'm like gonna have a better day tomorrow or if I really enjoyed taking a nice relaxing day I just like I feel like you can there are so many different ways to work around nothingness 
when you just feel like you don't have anything to write about. Anyway, that was a long answer. So moving on to the next question. What's the biggest journal splurge you've gotten as a gift or spent? Um, I don't remember like the amount of money that I've spent on one journal, um, like the most expensive journal that I've gotten. But I do know that one time I went to a super target and I had never been to a super target before. I didn't even know they existed. But I was just like driving around and I found a super target. I went in and I of course gravitated to the journaling section and there were so many beautiful journals and I spent like, it was like 60 or $70 worth of journals. It was really like, <laughs> probably not the best idea. Yeah, it was a lot of money. I think it was like my babysitting money or something that I spent. But honestly, I know that eventually I'm gonna fill all the journals. These are the journals that I have yet to fill up and then these are journals that I have already like completely 100% filled up. So I don't know, like to me, did I need to spend that much money right then and there? Probably not, but I also know that I'm so committed to writing that I will eventually get to them. So I'm not even worried about whether or not I'm gonna put them to use because I know I will eventually. What is your favorite entry of all time? Oh my goodness, so <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you. I don't know. I have so many journal entries. I don't I don't even know how many I have. Probably around like 2000 journal entries. So that's a lot to choose from. I don't I don't know if I have a favorite. There are definitely a lot of journal entries that stick out to me. Like when I just like think back on all of my journal entries, there are a few that I just remember being like significant times in my life or just I felt like were really good journal entries where I felt like really good about what I was writing and just kind of was able to synthesize my thoughts really well. I don't think I could ever choose just one but a couple that like just kind of jump out at me right away are mm, probably when I wrote about this dream that I had it was a very vivid dream and something very significant happened in the dream and I'm not gonna get into it or anything but it just like really made me realize a lot about like what was happening in my life at the time and how I felt about it and I just like really dissected the dream and tried to like figure out what it meant and so like that was a really cool journal entry I think I wrote like eight pages or four pages or something Thing like that and then any like journal entry that I have when I'm like so joyous like when I won homecoming queen I wrote all about that and just seeing the raw happiness on the paper is just like so fun and exciting to look back at there are a ton of like funny ones especially from when I was younger and um, didn't know what things meant and I just was like writing about my curiosity of it those are fun there are a lot of really like personal ones that are either like really emotional or like sad or angry or any like negative feelings. I feel like a lot of people like kind of shy away from letting their full emotions like let loose when they're writing, which is definitely a hard thing to do. But whenever I've done that in the past, I feel like it really allows for like, it creates these really beautiful journal entries to look back on that are very honest and raw. And so I feel like those are also, I don't know if I would say like favorite journal entries because obviously it's not like fun to look back on, but I feel like those are really important journal entries to reflect upon as well and just be able to recognize like how much you've grown since then or just like see how things have changed. I don't know, there, uh, there are so many journal entries that I are just like so important to my life and that I could like, I don't know, I could literally read all of my journal entries like all day every day. So someone asked if you can use pen that is erasable. So there are erasable pens. I've tried using them before. I've never actually written in a journal with them, but you know, honestly, if you like those pens, you can totally do that. Personally, I don't use those pens, but like there's literally nothing wrong with them. I'm sure they're reliable. Literally just use whatever pen you want. Next question. Which entry have you learned the most from? P.S. I really enjoy your journaling content. Please keep up with it in the future. I definitely will. Which entry have I learned the most from? So I feel like honestly that just kind of goes back to like any negative journal entries. I feel like I really learned the most from that or even just like when I write about experiences and being able to reflect upon those. I feel like I just always learn so much about who I used to be and who I've become. If I have a ton of stuff on my mind and I'm writing it all down on paper, it can really help me me, like sort things out and learn a lot about like what's in my head in that very moment again it's hard to choose just one that I've really learned the most from because just looking back on my whole entire life of like all of these journal entries there are so many things that I've learned from and I just I don't know if I can pinpoint just one journal entry that I've learned a ton from I definitely have learned you know a lot from a lot of the journal entries but I don't know if like there's any one that just like stands out so much how do you make journal entries more interesting I feel like there's 
is like a couple different things to say about this. You can make it more interesting by focusing on the content of what you're writing by making the content more interesting, or you can make it like more visually interesting. So looking at the content of interesting, you can make your content of like what you're writing more interesting by just like kind of spicing it up, doing it a little bit different than what you normally do. So if you're just writing about like what you do every single day, maybe try like putting in dialogue, writing about like the smaller things that happened and going into detail on certain things instead of just giving like a general overview of everything. You can again like write about the little things, things that make you happy, things that make you sad, write about your thoughts and your feelings rather than just about like a what happened. I feel like it's so important to include different like reflections and awareness, just add that level of awareness to your journal entries because it just adds so much more to it. It gives it more depth and more meaning. And you can also try writing about like different journal prompts. There are a ton of different prompts. I can maybe give you guys some prompts in another video if you would like that, or I'm sure there's a ton that you can find on like Google or on Pinterest or anything like that. There are a ton of different ways to spice up like what you're specifically writing, but then visually spicing up your journal entries, you can do change up the format of what you're writing. Instead of just writing like a big long paragraph, you can try using different paragraphs, try spacing things out, skipping a couple lines here and there, try using different fonts or like bolding words and things like that. You can include stickers and washi tape and tape things in. Maybe even try writing in different colors. If you do that though, make sure you have darker colors for the most part because if you write in yellow, it it's, I promise it's a bad idea. But yeah, there's like, a, there's a lot of different things that you can do to spice up your journal entries. Oh, and then the next question is, what are some ways you can decorate your journal entries? So again, washi tape and stickers and colors. You can try adding like borders to what you're writing. You can draw little pictures of what you're writing about or doodles. You can just like add like colorful accents here and there or tape things in. Like if you went to see a movie, you can tape in the movie ticket. You can do things like bullet journaling. There are literally an endless possibility of things that you can do to make your journal entries look more like aesthetically pleasing and beautiful and pretty. I do want to get more into that actually. I've like seen a lot of people doing like just like including different like oh, I don't even know how to describe it. Scrapbook paper and kind of making it like a collage kind of thing. I feel like that would be really cool but I've never like tried that before so it'll definitely be something to be fun like to experiment with. But yeah so there are a lot of different things you can do. How has your style of journaling changed as you've grown up? Wow that's actually something that you know I always think about you know how I've changed growing up and how my journaling has evolved over the years but I don't think I ever really like focus on the style so that's actually really something like that's really cool to think about obviously my handwriting has changed a ton from when I was seven years old or, or I think I started journaling when I was six actually yeah so my handwriting has changed so much from when I was six to now as an 18 year old so that's something that's definitely changed a lot over the years but then like you can see how my grammar and sentence structure has gotten way better over the years. My vocabulary increased and I started including a bunch of different like new words that I learned, had more complex sentences, started learning about where to place commas. That's something that I also like really loved about journaling is that like whenever we were learning about things in English about like sentence structure and like comma placements and the different types of sentences, I'd always like be able to like kind of be mindful about it as I was journaling, which I think definitely really really helped me in the long run with writing essays and things in high school as well as just like learning proper grammar and don't get me wrong I'm no expert but it definitely has helped me be a lot more mindful of it and practice what I've learned and then I feel like the content of what I journal about has changed a lot just kind of with the different periods of my life um, when I was younger I wrote a lot about boys <laughs> I was a little bit boy crazy and I mean some may argue I still am. There are definitely some boy crazy journal entries nowadays, but we won't get into that. <laughs> but I feel like as I've gotten older, I tend to write more about like more important things. Not that, not that boys aren't important and crushes and things like that. When I was younger, only a few things existed in my, in my mind that I really like cared about. And as I've gotten older, you know, there are a lot more things to think about, such as like heading off to college and just, I feel like I've gotten a deeper understanding Standing for who I am as a person that I can write about and just like a different perspective on life that just allows me to write about so many more things other than just boys. <laughs> and also I feel like as I've gotten older too, I've become more comfortable with journaling and I'm not afraid to like be very honest with my journal. So like when I'm like really upset, I don't hold back. 
in my journal. When I am really tired and don't want to write, I'll like just scribble again, scribble nonsense on the paper to fill up the page. And I'm not worried about having to write something super amazing and perfect every single time. So I guess my style has changed in that sense where I've become more like formatted with my journal entries, but I also am not afraid to be like unformatted either when I am not feeling up for it. I don't know if that made any sense. That was kind of a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of different like segments to that answer, but I hope that made sense. Okay, the next question that we got going on. For quick on the go journaling, would you recommend using an app or are you all on paper? This is actually a good question that I feel like I also don't really think about. Usually, okay. <sighs> Honestly, it kind of depends on the day. I definitely try and do like everything on paper as much as I can. I will take my journal with me certain to certain places. If I go to like a sleepover at a friend's house or something, I will take my journal with me. Sometimes I'll journal there or I will like pick up my journal throughout the day. If I'm out and about, usually I don't have like strong inclinations to like sit down and journal right now. But if there's anything that like crosses my mind of like, oh, I want to journal about this later or I want to make sure to write about this or like like think more about this later. I will a lot of the times like bullet things out on my phone. I always have a running list of things that I want to write about and just dive deeper into. So most of the times I'll just like write like a bulleted reminder of things that I want to write about that I'll like get back to later when I'm journaling in my journal. Sometimes though, there are times when I know I don't have time to write about what I want to write about. And so I'll bullet the things like that I wanted to write about so that I don't forget them. But sometimes I do write a little bit more and I might get carried away and write a little bit like like the whole entry or not, not like the whole entry, but just like a paragraph or so that I end up like copying down into my journal. Or there have been like a couple times where I've like pre-written a journal entry. Like I've been like typing it up because I know that when I write about it, I want it to be very structured because it can be like a complicated thing to write about just so like I don't know if I type it up beforehand it could make more sense when I'm writing it down for the most part though I journal straight into my journal and just do whatever thoughts come to my mind first and it's very just like in the moment like that even if it's not like very spontaneous writing it's still thought out as like in that moment but so I do for the most part journal straight into my journal if I am using any form of like app I don't have any like journaling app I know that some people do, which is like totally cool. For me personally, I mostly use like the notes app on my phone or sometimes if I have like a document pulled up, like I have um like just like a scheduling document and sometimes I'll like write little notes to myself there, just like whatever works. But another thing too is, so I have a midnight deadline for myself where I have to start journaling by midnight. I don't have to finish journaling like that entry by midnight, but I have to at least like start writing at least a word or a sentence before midnight. If I am out and about and I don't have my journal with me, I will find paper. I won't count it if I'm just like typing something up on my phone or doing it on a document or on a computer. For me, it's the physical act of writing in my journal that counts. And so if I don't have my journal with me, I will do whatever I can to find paper and something to write with, whether it's asking someone for a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, or one time I used a napkin because I was at a restaurant or something. Like there are so many different things. Like it's just always on my mind that I need to write before midnight and a lot of the times you know if I know I'm gonna be out and about or if I'm having like a sleepover with a friend a lot of the times I'll try and journal ahead of time so that I don't have to be in that like sticky situation of what if I miss the midnight deadline or I don't want to have to step away and write a page while I'm hanging out with my friend I will try and like if I can remember and if I can find time I'll try and write ahead earlier in the day but yeah uh, I will do whatever it takes to find something that I can write on and then later tape it into my journal. I kind of digressed a bit from that question, but yeah, that's that's that. <laughs> and then someone asked, where did you buy the thick notebook? This was on my 10 tips for journaling video. So I think you're talking about the like leather thick notebook that I had. That actually is not my journal, that is my dad's. So he let me use that just like for filming purposes. I really think that is like the coolest journal ever though. And I would love to get a journal like that. I don't know if I'd get that exact journal, but I kind of, I really want to get like a leather journal. I think that journal that was in that video was around $40. 
It's from Barnes & Noble though, so I can try and link it down below if I can find it. But yeah, it seems like a really cool journal and I definitely want to invest in a leather journal. Anyway, so that is going to be all for the questions. If you guys have any more questions, which I know I have a ton more that I need to answer and I'm sure you guys have some others that you want me to answer. If you have any other questions, basically just comment them down below or DM me and I will be making parts, twos, threes, fours, however many videos of these. I love just sitting and talking to you guys and just answering your questions and doing whatever I can to help and also like I would love to hear what you guys think too with like your answers to these questions just because I journal a lot doesn't mean like I am the queen of journaling I mean hey I would love that title but like I don't know everything and that's one thing that I love so much about journaling is that you can really make it your own it's very subjective to who you are and what you want so I would love to hear like your answers to these questions what you guys think and again you can comment that down below or DM me whatever works best anyway I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I will be making more journaling videos college videos and all of that stuff stay tuned for the future journaling Q&A's. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I love each and every one of you and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!